speaking of Arthur Anderson, I eventually quit the firm and quitting is another topic that you go into. So I just wanted to go there before we wrapped up because the question I want to ask is if quitting is repugnant, why would labeling it as pivoting change the social norms about it? Yeah, great question. So the back half of the book talks about what I call four little behavioral economic secrets to make your life better. And it's a, it introduces incentives, marginal thinking, culture, and what you just brought up, quitting. So the fact is we don't quit enough. And we don't quit enough because on the one hand, society has taught us that quitting is repugnant, just flat out repugnant. Like, go to Google and type in inspirational quotes, quitting, and you will find enough posters to fill every museum in the world. That's how repugnant we think quitting is. Now, the other reason why we don't quit enough is because we neglect our opportunity cost of time. Now, that's a lot of economies, so you might wonder, what does this all mean? I did a big survey on recent people who had quit their jobs. And reason number one is I lost the meaning of work. Okay. Reason number two, I didn't get the pay raise I thought I deserved. Okay. Reason number three, I didn't get the promotion I thought I deserved. All the way down to reason number 10, I didn't like my cubicle. Every reason, John, was because my current job got soiled. Nobody ever said my opportunity set got better. My, my opportunities or my jobs were better. That's because we don't think like that. We need to constantly think about our opportunities. And when the opportunity is really good that, and it's sure, you quit and you pivot. Now, it's clear from the science we don't quit enough. So I argue that if we just called it pivoting, then our parents and grandparents and friends wouldn't be dismissive of us. Because when people hear quitting, they think you're going to sit on the couch and watch TV all day. But really, it's not that. It's pivoting from something that is okay to something that is great. And we should have grit. But misguided grit does nobody any good. We need to have grit, but make appropriate choices on where to spend that grit. We have a big study. Steve Levin and I designed it where. We have people flip coins and then quit if it comes up heads and don't quit if it comes up tails. And then in six, nine, 12 months, we go back and say, how happy are you? People are a lot happier when they quit. So this kind of tells you there's a lot of anxiety and angst around quitting because society has tricked us. We really should, when we're agonizing over something, figure out what your opportunity set is. If there are good opportunities in there, quit and take it and pivot. We need to do that more often to lead better lives. Well, there's something in there that you just said that I want to just pick up on. And when I read Grit years ago, it got me thinking about what Angela was talking about at West Point because I went to the Naval Academy. And she talked about that it was Grit that got the cadets through West Point. And that was part of it. But from my standpoint, what got me through was the intentional choices I was making to apply that grit in the right manner, which is exactly what you said, which is really the backbone of Ashen Struck is it's combining that grit with intentionality and in how you're pursuing your life or any initiative you're trying to get done. 